everyone, welcome to a video about some really cool Sunny Stit licks, Sunny Stit phrases that can be played on top of the standard minor swing. If you are a regular to this channel, and if you're not, I hope you will become one. So subscribe, ring the bell, you know, all the things that YouTubers want you to do but it really helps. If you are a regular to this channel, then you might have noticed that I didn't make a whole lot of videos for the past three weeks. That is because I was very busy being a, a committee member of exams at the university I teach at. So that's why I wasn't available to make any videos, but I'm starting again, and I'm starting with a new format, which I'm calling the Minor Swing Lick Book. And it is basically a continuation from my physical book, the book that I wrote called the Van Hemert System, which is based on the same premise. It is about one particular set of changes, uh, namely the chords to minor swing, adapted a little bit so that there is a 2-5-1 in a major and a 2-5-1 in minor. I will show you later. And then I'm showing some fundamental shapes that I've come up with on the guitar neck to get you started improvising on those chords, starting from zero and going to a pretty advanced level. That's that's the book, the the premise of the book. But this is a continuation of that idea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those same chords, and there will be a backing track available for you to practice with. And I'm going to take artists I like. So starting today with Sonny Stitt, and I'm going to take licks they play on any song that I want, and I'm going to apply them to minor swing. So at the end of this series. You, you would have uh, lots of phrases from interesting players that you can immediately apply on a simple set of changes. Basically, that's the idea. So to start, I took the solo of Sonny Stitt that he plays on a standard called There Will Never Be Another You, and it's linked in the description. And I took five licks I like, and I'm gonna apply them on minor swing. So first you'll see the lick slowly, then a little faster, and then you'll see them inside an improvised solo on the chords of minor swing. It's not the regular chords of minor swing. The regular chords of minor swing are two bars of A minor, two bars of D minor, two bars of E7, two bars of A minor. That stays. But then I'm gonna do a 2 5 one to c D minor seven, G seven C, and then a 2 5 one to A minor. So B half diminished, E7, A minor. So the last eight bars are different. You could say those are the changes of Autumn Leaves. So let me play a whole chorus for you so that you know what the chords sound like with the rhythm. One, two, one, two, three, four. There's a link in the description to a backing track with these chords, and that's the backing track that goes with my book. But uh, I'm gonna give access to everyone just to the backing track, so you can practice the ideas we're gonna talk about today. So here is the first phrase. One, two, three, four. Three, four. This is the opening phrase of Sonny Stitch solo, originally, of course, in E flat, sounds like this. But uh, because there's a 2 5 1 in the key of C in minor swing, in, in this version of minor swing, we're gonna move it to C. You saw me using it in the improvisation as the end of a 2 5 1, but you can also just use it on the one chord like when a song starts, like there will never be another U, it starts in E flat, or let's say, all of me starts in C, then you would play. 
And of course the hammer-ons and slides are very important for the sound. This is an easy going lick, easy to play, has a bit of a bluesy flavor. Let's go to the second phrase. One, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one. This is a 2-5-1-2-A minor, originally of course to C minor in There Will Never Be Another You, but now transposed to A minor. But if you notice that on the B half diminished, he's not thinking B half diminished, but he's thinking B minor, right, with his F sharp. So that is kind of strange to think about when you have a chord like B half diminished. But you will notice this is happening in solos of many bebop players, even Charlie Parker, kind of disregarding the half diminished chord and just playing the minor seven. Uh, there are some solos that even Django does that. And the reason for that could be many. One theory that's floating around uh, the internet is that uh, those players had so many licks for two five ones in major that it would be a shame not to be able to use them on 2-5-1s in minor, just because of that half-diminished chord. So they would just play the 2-5-1 in major, like they always did, and then resolve it to a minor chord. So they could still use the same patterns, and still use the exact same phrase on the, on the dominant chord. Another theory is that it just uh, gives an extra color, because now you go from a kind of major sound, even though, of course, it's B minor. But in B minor, there is a D major triad. So if you play... It sounds very major -y. And then you alter it on the dominant chords. What, with the flat nine? And then resolve to minor. Now you could of course resolve this lick to major very easily. So you can use them on both, but it is kind of a nice flavor to have that minor chord there. Um, although I wouldn't do it every time, but it seems in this solo, Son Sid is doing it every time or both times because he only plays one chorus. Let's go to the third phrase, which is again a two, five, one, two minor, to A minor. Three, four, one, two. One, two. Here we see the exact same thing, disregarding the B half diminished and going to B minor instead with this. That's really a lick for B minor and a really nice one. He doesn't even alter the dominant chord with a flat 9 or flat 13, just stays on that major sound or that minor 7 sound and then resolving to minor just on the one chord. That's a really nice leak for A minor. So again, same thing. You could play this on a major 2-5-1 very easily by just resolving it to the major third. Or play it in minor and have that, that, that kind of weird sound on the B half diminished. But a nice sound if you use it with care and not too much. Let's go to phrase number four. One, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one.
This is a regular 251, originally played in the key of A flat, because there's a 251 to A flat on um, There Will Never Be Another You. In this case, of course, it's a 2512 C. It's just a C major scale, starting on the third. Some chromatic passing notes. And now a resolution to really a C major triad. But I like it, it's simple, and you don't always have to play those weird phrases with lots of alterations or weird arpeggios or tons of enclosures. Just a nice and easy going phrase. Very effective. Let's go to the final phrase. One, two, three, four. Three, four. This is the bebop way of playing this phrase. Right, that would be the gypsy jazz way that started with Stockholo and Jimmy Rosenberg. Same principle, you have an A minor arpeggio, and you just change the top note, the root in this case, going down to the major seven, to the seven, to the six. Now this is the bebop way, you go down, but it's the same principle, here is the root to the major seven, to the seven, to the six, and then I did the same thing on D minor because I think it's good to know it in two different fingerings, but it's the same principle. Root, major seven, seven, six. It's pretty unreal to play, but uh, it's doable if you practice it slowly. And in the improv, you saw me play it. Uh, in a row because of course the, the chords of minor swing go from A minor to D minor. But if you only have a minor chord, you can just play half of it, right? You have a G minor, then you just play. And of course you don't play, because that would be for C minor. If there's no C minor chord, there's no, no point. You just play half of it. Or of course, if you only have C minor, you play this one. That was it for this video. Now I'm gonna tell you about another change. Because of the past format where I had a complete solo, it was easier for me to uh, make a video every week and then do one for my patrons and one for my YouTube channel because I would just split the solo in two. But now I'm gonna make a second video with the same topic. So it's, it's again, Sonny Stitt. But I'm gonna do it for my Patreon only, and um, because this is much more work, because I have to transcribe, I have to play all those improvisations, record them, it's not just one solo. I need more time for that. So probably it's gonna be one video a week, one for my YouTube channel, the one that you're watching now, and one for my Patreon. So if you wanna see the video on Patreon, you could check it out, and if you join there for the 10 euro tier, you get access to that exclusive video, which I'm gonna make this week, will we'll be up in the weekend or something. You can download the tab, you can watch the video, and if you join for the five euro tier, you can download the tab that you saw on screen today. And of course, if you join those tiers, there are many other videos of the past that you can also access. And after I made those two videos, I'm gonna continue with the minor string lick book with another artist. I don't know who, could be a gypsy jazz artist, could be a bebop artist, someone that I really like the solos of. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next video on Patreon or right here on YouTube. Bye. <laughs>